Today I'm going to try and build the most compact automatic dependent surveillance broadcast receiver or ADSB for short, which is used by aircraft to determine where they are on a map. I've already been asked the reason why am I doing this? Because I can, Neva. So let's see what we need and get straight into it. Firstly, what we need is something to put it on. So we've got a Raspberry Pi 4, one gig. Um, I want to keep as few cables going to the device as possible. So I am also going to fire in a POE hat for the Raspberry Pi. This is something that I bought as a kit. Um, it is the antenna and uh, SDR to convert the radio signal into a digital source. We're gonna need the tight housing that's gonna go inside. So this is kind of the smallest that I could get for the Raspberry Pi to go into it as well. I've got a 90 degree angle USB port. Just to try and keep the box waterproof, I've also got a PG7 cable gland to keep the water out. Of course, for getting the Raspberry Pi up and running, we're gonna need an SD card and an adapter so we can read it into the computer. I've also got some heat shrink and some brass spacer screws just to try and give us some space within the box. Let's get into it. I'm gonna use Flight Radar 24 setup. They've already got an image on their website, so you can just download that, install that on your Raspberry Pi, and you're basically good to go. So we will download this. And whilst that's installing, I'll prep the SD card. Fire that in there. So an eight gig card is probably the best for this. Unfortunately, 32 was the smallest I had, so it's a bit of a waste. Um, there we go, perform quick format and finish. Okay, now that we've got that, we will extract the files from the zip. And in preparation, we'll fire up the Raspberry Pi Imager. This is something I already had on my laptop. Okay, now that we have downloaded and exported that, we will take that file, fire it into Raspberry Pi Imager. So we'll go choose the Raspberry Pi device. That's a Raspberry Pi 4. And we go to use custom. We'll find this in our folder structure. So there we go, FR24 Raspberry Pi latest image. Choose a storage device. Well, we have already formatted that 32 gig card. Like I said, you don't need any more than eight gig, but that's all I had. I'm gonna add some custom settings of my own. Right, let's get that writing. And whilst we're doing that, we will start unboxing stuff. Okay, so prime event, we have the Raspberry Pi 4. As I mentioned again, one gig. Happy days. And we also have the PoE injector, the hat to go on the top. Cool. So obviously we'll just stick this on top of here. We've got the PoE hat, it's four of four. So we'll get that on and we'll get the um, the posts and things put on as well. Get that built up. And Blue Peter moment incoming. Here's one I built earlier. Okay, so I have this built up on the posts. The posts that are in the center came with the PoE hat and then I've added on some extra ones on the bottom. Um, there is a valid reason for that. Now this adapter, is a fair size compared to where it's got to go but it allows us to get this between the small gap and it stops it from shorting off the bottom of the air as well it's very very close speaking of very very close trying to get this to fit into this little box will be interesting that is in the frame at the bottom of the box and very very neat very, very neat let's get that back out of there. We're going to take the little locking ring off of the antenna port and then we're going to drill that through the outside of the box. This is my right angle USB and it comes with this little ribbon cable. On this we'll flick up the door, exposes those pins and then we just need to place the ribbon for this into here. Now, just for the way that this is going to sit, I'm probably going to have to put this into the top port of the USBs so that the circuit board that comes down from that, there you go, um, covers the second one and then the ribbon tucks underneath like that. And plug this in and see what we've got to play with. 
but essentially that's going to have to fold over. So we've got the USB plugged in in the middle there and we've also got the SD card with the operating system on it. There we go. That is made for it. We've got the SD card sitting up at the top there and then that USB right angle is uh, yeah, tight, 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 tight. We will get the power cables coming in from the bottom next. My God, it works in this garage. As long as we have a couple of pilot drills, pilot drill for this, so that I know I can come out roughly in the right place. Let's see what we get. And that is the box compromised. It is no longer waterproof because we drilled one hole. With six mil, it should be perfect. And we're flat on the surface, so I shouldn't go through my hand. Shouldn't is the key word. Nice and easy. And put in the box. But we've got that coming out of there, so that's good. Now the good thing with these glands is that they have a rubber seal on them so when we get that tightened up um, that will seal from the gland to the box and then when we tighten this it will seal from the rubber gland that's in there to the cable. Right, how we're sitting in with the gland then? If it wasn't made for it, what was it? So just because this receiver is a metal body um, and it's going to be sitting pretty close under the bottom of the Raspberry Pi. I am going to wrap it in heat shrink just to prevent it from shorting anything. Just, it doesn't need it, there's enough room, but you can never be too sure, never be too safe. And then we'll make that end off. In order to try and get this in, we've had to cut down one of the Cat5 connectors. Before we close this bad boy up, I really want to stick silica gel pack in there just for any dampness that may arise. But uh, obviously it won't because you know it was, it was done well. I tell you what, this is never coming out once it's in. Oh yeah! I'll need to up the port and the switch. Nah, port 10. Port 10. Oh, we've got power. We are spinning up. Cool, so we've got it up and working. We'll get this registered online and that should be us. Now I've got the Raspberry Pi plugged in, we're powering up and you'll see it loading up on the screen. I've just plugged an HDMI in that so that you can see it. Now once you get to this point, it'll tell you that the feeder hasn't started because you need to go in and register it on your account. So we'll come over to the Flight Radar website and we will log in. If you don't already have an account, set one up here. Okay, so we're now logged in. Obviously I've done this before, so I've already got the business account marker up there. If we go into add coverage in the menus and then share your data. This will then allow you to register the, your device. So at the moment we are running on a Raspberry Pi. And as you scroll down, we've got a button here to activate Raspberry Pi. So we'll click on that. Once we're into the activating the receiver, you should see your device listed here. If you don't, make sure that you're on the same network with your Raspberry Pi as you are your computer. And then we will go activate. It then asks you to mark the position of your receiver. I am obviously in Edinburgh. Once you've marked the position of where it is, you shall have a button that says verify application. We are near Edinburgh Airport because that's the closest one. Here we go. You'll then get the window saying, congratulations, you're now registered. And that is it. And back over to the Raspberry Pi flight radar screen, you'll see that the screen refreshed there. It's now got your radar ID code, um, your transceiver code, and how many aircraft you have already uploaded. Once you get green across the board, you're set to go and Flight Radar's website will eventually update you to a business account.
And there we go, we're green across the board and we're all good. Job done. If you fancy doing one yourself, I would recommend getting a slightly bigger box, but this is just me, I just like to make things a little difficult for myself. It's a challenge if nothing else. If you found this video useful, please like, and uh, until next time, I'll catch you later. Cheers.